почитувани добар ден. На Шпанија и преостануваат уште неколку дена до крајот на председателството со Европската унија, пошто оваа функција ќе ја предаде на следниот председавач земјата Белгија. За очекувањата, но и реализацијата на приоритетите од Шпанското председателство, за предизвиците и проширувањето на Европската унија, но и за реформите и евроинтегративниот пат на Северна Македонија, во следните 15 на минути разговараме со Шпанскиот амбасадор во Зенјава, неговата екселенција Хозе Луис Лозано Гарсија. Амбасадоре Гарсија, уште неколку дена, како што реков, од председавањето со Шпанија, со Европската унија, ова функција потоа ќе ја предадете на Белгија. На крајот од вашиот мандат, дали сте задоволни од приоритетите, односно од реализацијата на приоритетите, кои што си ги поставивте и што би порачале, која би била вашата порака до следниот председавач Белгија? Well, to the next president, it's difficult to say. I mean, what would you, uh, what to be say, what to be done? Um, I try to be quite respectful to the coming presidency, to our uh, Belgian friends, and just to, to tell them that they count on our support. If there is, a, if we can share our experience, it would be perfect. But I wouldn't go any further in giving any sort of uh, advice. I mean just our, our clear support. And as for the accomplishment of our achievements during our presidency, well, I can say that uh, we have, uh, I mean, there are always things to be done for sure. Just to, to give a, cup, a couple of figures on facts, there's been as many as 24 informal ministerial meetings, all sorts of, I mean, energy, transport, you name it. There's been as well 24 uh, formal meetings. Well, maybe I am missing someone because these are figures only a few days ago, so it had to be updated, but would be around that. We have had as many as six, uh, six uh, summits, and in addition to that, we have had uh, a formal European Council and an informal European Council, the one in, in Granada. I mean, most important, just keep it because we will come back, I suppose, to this Granada and Granada declaration. So, plenty of, of uh, meetings, plenty of ideas, initiatives. Uh, I, well, I think that that's what is supposed to be for a, for a presidency. Uh, Spain is the fifth occasion that is uh, assumes the EU presidency. And uh, we can consider ourselves, uh, we continue to be a pro-European. Sometimes you may say after years about uh, some sexism coming uh, from the public authorities, I think we still have a European Union really top as a well, part of our everyday life. Но на што веројатно најмногу ги интересира гледачите е делот во однос на проширувањето, прашањето за проширувањето на Унијата. Какви се во овој контекст вашите очекувања? Дали е Унијата подготвена за нови членки до 2030 година, како што најави председателот на Европскиот совет Шарл Мишел? Actually, it's interesting the way you pose the question. It's not so much would be candidates ready for, but actually is Europe ready for? I mean, there may be two different approaches to it, but in the end it's quite, quite they go hand in hand. And I just refer precisely to this uh, Granada Declaration. In this Granada Declaration, uh, beginning of October, uh, there was a full para just dealing with enlargement. And uh, stressing the geostrategic ge importance of it and on the one hand also requesting the need from candidates just to uh, make an extra effort on reforms and so on, but also making a call to the European Union itself, institution, member states, we have to, to make also an effort because it's indeed there is a need to, for both of us to go together and it will take. So it would take work and we are working on that. 
Амбасадор е за опозицијата и за а, критичката јавност, а, за белешките од а, последниот извештај за напредокот на Северна Македонија од страна Европската комисија а, се реални. А, за разлика од опозицијата, власта смета дека нема назадување и дека извештајот и не е така лош. А, кој е вашиот коментар или еве да речеме вашата порака до властите а, во однос на забелешките од последниот извештај на комисијата? I will I will tackle later on about statistics and uh, reports and how you want to read it it is the the the, the glass is half half full half empty well it's always difficult on that and uh, it's the role to be played by both the government opposition I mean it's logical and we have to, to be aware of that. My message, you say, would be a message not only for authorities, you mentioned, but also for the opposition. I mean, in general terms, we, Spain, we are now uh, playing the role of EU presidency. Now we have a more prominent role, but so far the message we have been conveying is both my Prime Minister, Minister Alvarez, here and in other instances in Brussels, for example, is the support of Spain to North Macedonia European path. And we continue to, to, to be along that line. I mean, we are supporting North Macedonia in its quest and determination to become a full member of the European Union. And we are ready to support. Во меѓувреме, Македонија ја очекуваат избори, распуштање на парламентот и техничка влада. Она што е факт е дека во моментов нема консензус за донесување на уставните измени. А, дали мислите дека а, тој консензус ќе биде постигнат или очекувате ли да биде постигнат од следниот парламентарен состав и може би она што е уште поважно, е дали тие уставни измени ќе бидат гаранција дека Бугарија понатаму нема да поставува дополнителни критериуми на нашиот пат кон Европската унија? Бак, in, in 2022, in July, conclusions were adopted on the basis of framework agreement and this is part of a process. And that process, I can say, happily, I can say that negotiations were open back in July 2022. To continue, there is a clear condition, name it, maybe we can call it uh, differently, but this, this amendment to the Constitution. So there is a need for that. Would it mean that is the, 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 the end of, well, I would say, I don't want to, to send a sort of a pessimistic message. No, on the contrary, what we continue to say, uh, I know, uh, uh, European instances, other colleagues, all other member states, is once you are in the process, you are whole in the process, I mean, opening, but then coming to a second intergovernmental conference, once this uh, condition has been met, this, this in, uh, amendment to the, con to the Constitution, then issues would take a different turn. I mean, there would be not only that, there may be other conditions, other requests coming from one country, from another, but in the end, things will come to take a different, uh, a different uh, sort of uh, size and importance and uh, what does it mean? I come back to your question. Would it be the last? There may be plenty of other issues. In this context, what are the chances of the country to start the European Union at the time of the next president, at the time of the mandate of Belgium? Negotiations have been already open. Back in July 2022, there was the first intergovernmental conference. Now we are talking about continuation of it. It's an important thing, I can say, that the screening process has been completed quite successfully. Uh, I would not quote, uh, you allow me, uh, local, but also in Brussels, that's the approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, preparation for becoming full member, all, well, there is indeed 
a high degree. I won't, I won't dwell into that because it's up to uh, EU Commission, those that are into the detail, but it's already the process. You say, the condition is clear. I mean, we could have this second intergovernmental conference once constitution amendment has been adopted. Ambasadore, koji reformi spored vas se našite slabi točki koji što ne oddalečuvat od Evropska unija? Hmm, indeed, so many years and I, 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 I can say that I, I can feel it when I came here a couple of years ago. There is this sometimes feeling of frustration and we have been working and we have been longing for it and we have done anyhow. Yes. Uh, I will say, please, it will come. Um, weak points. Weak points, uh, that was my, my, my point. Weak points, actually, let's take it differently. The new methodology, when coming to negotiations, would be, and that's the second part, I mean, second intergovernmental conference, and then opening clusters. And now, there is, with the new methodology, there is a very important what is called the fundamentals. Fundamentals, which is the kernel of the whole process. Values and so on. It's rule of law, it's judiciary, the fight against corruption. And actually, it's the very first cluster that is open in negotiations. And it will be the last that will be closed. So, let's not speak about weak points. It's where any candidate will have to do an extra effort because it's actually the most complicated subject for everyone. And first to open, last to close. So I would take it in from that point of view. Kakov je vaši od komentar za posljednjite izmeni na krivični od zakonik, so koji što značitelno se namalija kaznite za zloupotrebi na službenata položba i oblastovanja? On this I am trying to recall uh, a precise uh, a statement that was made the day after by the speaker, I, I cannot recall whether it was a speaker or actually a commissioner back in Brussels, actually a, pain, a point was made referring to there is a need to follow up this issue and so how it evolves. So I would say, okay, there was a sense of concern but at the same time the need to f pay a very attentive eye to it and see how it evolves. So I would, I would stay there. It uh, has been adopted and, uh, and well, it's national legislation. So I, I wouldn't go any further a part of this. And I would uh, sort of just yes, uh, um, stick to this, this, uh, this comment coming from the uh, European Commission, which actually they are well, uh, especially well informed because uh, as we have seen in the, in the progress report, they pay a special attention. And actually in the progress report, there is a very specific chapter and a very some specific uh, paras referring to the issue. So I would stick to that. Ambassadore, do you see the political will of the Macedonian vlasti in the fight against corruption? Postojano slušame deklarativni izjavi deka se raboti na toa pole, međutoa od ona što go gledame vo relevantnite međunarodni izveštaji, od kritikite od evropskite diplomati, od međunarodnata zajednica, se slučuva nešto po inaku. Mesos are being taken by this government, indeed, but there is a need to strengthen and to what extent you can assess, as you say, the will it's rather complex to, 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 to be specific on what is the real will or to what extent uh, there is a will, but it's also a complex issue. It's not an issue that is going to be solved just one day. Uh, you have to take measures and you have to keep on taking measures. It's not, a, as I said, just a, something that can be solved just in one go. And uh, I would say, indeed, there are signals, there is a commitment, at the same time there is a need for results. International community is paying attention to it. European uh, Commission report also reflects on it. And uh, it's a work in, uh, in the making. And so 
and then trying to see whether the government will is, well, I think is far beyond what is, I would be going to say, you know, well, I see the will or not. Let's, let's speak about facts, things that are being done, uh, additional decisions, additional steps to be taken, but uh, I would, I would uh, place it like that, sorry, and mm -hmm. okay. very, very practical. Ambassador, I Thank you so much to you, to your team, and it's been a pleasure. Vam počitovani vi blagodaram za vnimanje to so koje ne sledevte. Do vidovanja.